Thank you, Carissa. Okay. No problem. Okay, so I'd like to call the May 22nd East Line Board of Ed regular meeting to order. All those who can stand, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first order of business is is there any public comment tonight? Another shot, any public comment? Okay, hearing none, we'll put public comment. So we move on to recognition. So it's a great uh it's a great night to recognize some students with some outstanding achievement and, and um Nice to see the families here as well. So uh, real happy that we can get started. I'll turn it over to Jeff to lead the discussion. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bauman. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to our interim uh, principal, Mrs. Kelly, who's going to uh, start off with some information about our two middle school K recognition uh, students. So, Mrs. Kelly, I'll turn it over to you. Super. Well, I would like to take the time to recognize um, Cassidy Devine. So, um, Cassidy is here on camp this evening. Cassidy is a member of the Cassidy's team. She's one of the recipients of the CAVE Recognition Award this evening. Um, this um, is a, a summary as provided by her um, staff to her team. Over the course, and I'm going to read you what, what they have shared. Uh, over the course of her middle school years, Cassidy has grown into a student that her peers look up to and her teachers depend on. Her leadership qualities both in and out of the classroom are inspiring. She consistently works hard to achieve straight A's in all of her classes in faculty accommodations every semester. She strives to always do more and do better than is expected of her. She never settles for less than her best. However, when asked what drives her to succeed, you might be surprised by her answer. My time spent, this is for Cassidy, my time spent studying for tests and quizzes was not given the recognition to make me satisfied, she says. With an empty feeling inside, I made a drastic decision and shifted my perspective. I was not going to follow in the footsteps of those before me. My purpose was to be a leader and guide people around me to make a positive impact on both our community and school. Though my name written out on paper was Cassidy O'Brien, the last six letters do not define me as a person, what my actions and attitude do. Cassidy takes this message to heart in everything she does. Cassidy has participated in orchestra all four years of middle school and takes her lessons very seriously. In eighth grade, she joined the yearbook club with the hopes of interacting with students and younger Kivas and making a positive impact with them. In sports, Cassidy is someone who thrives as part of the team, and this was evident when she earned a starting spot as the only seventh grader on the basketball team. In eighth grade, she was chosen as the team captain and helped work with her teammates to not only improve their skills, but to also teach by example helping her coach organize donations to bring to an opposing school's toy drive. Outside of school, Cassie participates in two other basketball teams, including AAU, Swarm out of Norwich. And along with basketball, she has played both lacrosse and soccer for the past 10 years on the Eastland travel teams. She continues her leadership skills on the field. These characteristics and her skill level earned her a spot in the all-star lacrosse game, which only the best in the state took part in. Her soccer team won their league this past fall, and she received the Southeast Connecticut Award, which was given to a player who demonstrated good behavior, teamwork, and soccer expertise. Cassidy also volunteers with a program called Miracle League, which allows children with disabilities to have opportunities playing sport. Being a good communicator, as well as a courageous person in both class and sports are characteristics that led teachers to nominate Cassidy for the Leaders Club in seventh grade. In eighth grade, staffing changes resulted in the club ending. Cassidy worked to find a staff member to start the Leaders Club at Elms again. And just as a sidebar, she did come to both Mr. Bickwood and I and um, proposed that we read Safety Club. And um, to her credit, we were able to do that. There, she's able to use her voice to speak on a variety of topics and issues in an effort to make changes um, and make change to Elms' atmosphere for the better. Being a good public speaker and always coming up with new ways to enhance the school system, Cassie was also asked to take part in the wellness committee meeting to get students' perspective on how to improve the lunchroom, wellness center, and life arts. With zero absences, 
straight A's, a bright outlook, and an involvement in a variety of activities with different people. Cassidy has proven to be an individual and a leader. Whether it is having a positive impact on those around her or always trying to be the best version of herself, she causes others to want to do the same. Cassidy spends po spreads positivity throughout our school and community. She is and will continue to be a leader and a role model in East Line and the others. Why don't we do John's recognition and then we're going to have them both come up? Perfect. Okay. okay. Our next recipient is JP Antonino, and he is a member of the Ospreys. JP is a natural leader on our team. He is an exemplary student, a scholar, as well as person of character and leadership. JP is enthusiastic about his education and encourages his drive amongst his peers. He is a conscientious student who readily contributes to class discussions and takes pride in challenging himself to further his learning. JP takes great pride in his academics and excels in all classes. He has maintained an A plus average in all classes throughout his middle school years. In addition to academic excellence, JP exemplifies the characteristics of citizenship, integrity, and dependability. He goes out of his way to include all students equally, encourages a positive climate through his own behaviors. When asked about his leadership skills, JP said that leading by example has always been an unconscious goal he has worked toward, and he finds pride in showing his peers how to be the best versions of themselves. He does this by presenting himself as a role model in a variety of sports and activities. In school, JP is on Elms Varsity Basketball and Leaders Club. He also plays on East Line basketball travel team and East Line senior football team. Outside of East Line, JP pay, plays for the Nightmare Football 7v7 team and the Connecticut Warriors baseball team. These teams travel around the country to play against the best competition in the United States. Despite his successes in athletics, JP says he is most proud of his academic accomplishments. With such a busy schedule, he consciously makes his schoolwork a priority. He shares that he has an extreme dedication to assuring that his grades stand out. He made it a goal to never finish with any, without anything below 94%. And so far, he has achieved that every year at Eastland Middle School, consistently earning him faculty commendations. JP also represented the Osprey team in a school-wide spelling bee this year. He participates in Elms Choir and was given the lead role in all plays through elementary school, showing the creative side as well. Outside of school, JP continues to be a role model by volunteering at sports camps for elementary schools. He regularly volunteers at St. Agnes Church, uh, his local parish, reading scriptures and passages for mass and participating in productions that demonstrate the beliefs of his religion. After graduating from Eastland Middle School, JP is hoping to attend Choate Ra Rosemary Hall, a prestigious college preparatory high school. JP is an outstanding member of both of our school and Eastland community who has a bright future ahead of them. Congratulations. That's in JP. JP, if you could come up. You might have told me that here. Maybe uh, someone get a picture for me. Um, maybe when you come in, don't get a picture. Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Here. Yeah. Right. Well, come on, screen team on our board. And I'll I'll get you into this. Okay. Okay. JB, congratulations. Thank you. We're proud of you. Yes, congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Let's get a picture. Well, Gloria, 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 High school principal who's going to talk about our high school recipients. Ms. Kelly? Thanks. I'll be reading the first grade given to me by the students and the counselors. I'm pleased to present Mahira Hassan for the CAVE Leadership Award. Mahira has challenged herself throughout her high school education with rigorous coursework and has strived to be an active member and leader in a variety of extracurricular activities 
as is evident in her ability to be academically successful while also volunteering and being an active member in clubs and athletics. Mahira has been the Secretary for Student Senate for the past two years and an active member for three. She truly enjoys contributing to events the entire school participates in and strives to make changes for issues mentioned by the student body. Through her role in Senate, she was chosen to be her class's Board of Education representative. Mahira also takes great pride in her role in the Yale Center for Clinical Investigation Internship. During her time in this internship, she has not only taken every opportunity to listen to lectures from Yale professionals, but also began a group project focused on creating a web page and advertisements to emphasize the importance of youth clinical research. Currently, she is working with her group to move forward in creating this website and propose it to the Translational Science Conference held in April. In addition to her passion for these roles and experiences, Mahira volunteers at Flanders Elementary School, was the secretary of the Red Cross Club, is the secretary of Key Club, is an active member of the Shoreline Leos Club, and is the co-president of the Diversity Club. And on top of all that, she also participates in lacrosse. She is a well-rounded and open-minded leader within the East High School. Thank you, Mrs. Kelly. We'll next turn to Connor. We'll Please to present Connor Tukey for the Cave Leadership Award. He has proven <laughs> academic success and has earned, earned, earned high honors distinction in a rigorous college preparatory curriculum. He is ambitious and loves the process of learning. Connor is a member of the Spanish Honor Society and a student held in high regard by faculty for his willingness to help others and his aptitude for elevating classroom discussion. Equally important to academics, Connor has also shown a commitment to extracurricular activities and enjoys staying active. He's well-rounded and stands out with his natural leadership skills and strong work ethic. He is a valuable member of service clubs, such as Peers Reaching Out, Student Senate, and Key Club. Connor has worked for the betterment of our school community and community at large by participating in events such as the East Line Blood Drive, the Out of Darkness Walk, the College Fair, beach cleanups, and Miracle League activities like I Can Bike. As a result of his drive and dedication, Connor was selected to attend the Key Club Leaders Conference last fall. As if that is not enough, Connor is also an integral member of varsity sports such as soccer, basketball, and baseball. Additionally, he's played through the regional travel baseball team, Connecticut Crush Club team. He has earned recognition as honorable mention all ECC player and recommendation for the Eastern Connecticut Conference Leadership Workshop. Lastly, Connor is an outstanding role model who enjoys working with the Miracle League Baseball Program, Little League Baseball, and as a camp counselor through Eastline Parks and Rec. Peyton will join the Potter and I'm um, here. You can come up. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Congratulations. All right, we're going to get a picture from this way. Thank you very much. Many thanks to everyone who's here tonight. This is a prestigious recognition that we do yearly, and uh, we really enjoy recognizing our students. So, congratulations to the four of them. Thank you. So, uh, so. Congratulations to all, pretty really uh, great to see. Our next order of business is actually executive session, which is a great time that everyone can uh, uh, leave uh, quietly and not not even be, be seen. So um, we're gonna, let me, I'll first make a move to enter executive session to discuss the final candidate of director of athletics and the proposed non-union unaffiliated benefit wage schedule. Second. Second. All those uh, in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed. Aye. And staying. Okay, we are in executive session. We're and with the board. Then we're going to go to the next yeah. room. So yeah. everyone, yeah. everyone yeah. stay here. Yeah. Our audience stay here. We're going to the board. We're going to go to the next room. Over. Probably wasn't clear on that. Okay, here, Amy. Here, you can see right here too. 
So I know you're giving a report, Dan, right? Okay, yeah. so you can sit right next to me in here, no pressure. Double <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Great, thanks so much. So uh, we're coming back from executive session, which was uh, to discuss the final candidate for the director of, of athletics and the proposed non-union and unaffiliated benefit wage agenda. The first order of business is approval of minutes from the May 1st Board of Ed special meeting. Any comments or changes? We have a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. The May 1st, uh, 2023 Board of Education special meeting is presented. I'll second. No. Any further comment? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Uh, Lisa, Jamie. That's it, too. Okay. Yep. Okay, so those minutes pass. Now we move on to special reports, and we have our selectmen's representative. We have Anne Thank you, Thanks, Anne, for coming. Yeah, we have a very needy agenda. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be as brief as I can. Um, May 18th, there was the vote on the referendum before the budget, and as you know, it passed. And uh, interestingly, more folks voted this year than last. Um, the total number of votes is 1,238 compared to the shy of 600 last year. I, I was glad to see that, you know, the people are engaged and paying attention and getting out there. So that was a good thing. And interestingly, the same percentages um, that it comes out to about 62% in favor and about 38% uh, against. And it, it didn't change with the 600 vote versus the 1,200. So, um, so that was interesting. Um, Charter revision is coming up. Um, there is a second public hearing on June 6th. Uh, there will be a draft report from the commission uh, ahead of that June 6th date so that you can read about the changes that are, will be proposed. And then uh, the June 21st, um, uh, the commission will present um, its findings and report, draft report to board of select. So uh, some interesting things there, and that, that's a whole um, half hour conversation. So, so we'll get into that down, down the road. Um, uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, I was very pleased to see that the East Line Police Department was awarded both at the same time, tier one and tier two accreditation status. And this article appeared in the paper as well. You may, you may have uh, caught it. Um, so, as you recall, um, in 2020, there was the Police Accreditation uh, Act uh, uh, enacted at, um, in Hartford and um, felt again lots of requirements, additional requirements were there for the for police departments. So the last two years, our our um, our department really did a great job of uh, organizing resources, looking at their policies, uh, with the help of special counsel as well and have um, really done a great job of um, meeting the requirements ahead of time. I think uh, they're the first department in Southeast Connecticut that has um, been gotten that tier two accreditation. Um, so I think that's an important you know, stepping stone for, um, for any department in particular arts, which is a younger department. So good to, good to know about. Um, let's see, uh, as you all know, We've already started the, the painful process of the I-95 exit 70 for uh, the um, work uh, by the state DOT. And um, the best place to go is our town website, which you can then get the link to the I-95 eastline.com site for information. It, you know, the first This first year won't be so bad, and we'll see how it goes. Um, I've heard, too, that if um, weather holds, and we have a milder winter and that we can actually shorten this uh this process so i'm hopeful, forever hopeful and so so that we could if that does happen um town hall hours just for your information will change this was an administrative decision out of for a selecting decision uh but it is good to know eight to five monday through thursday 
and Friday hours, uh, 8 o'clock to 11.30. Um, uh, so we're kind of, we're following some other towns that are, that are either don't have Friday hours or have partial, you know, hours. So uh, this was uh, all approved. Um, all the all employees have uh, joined in. Unions agree that this, this is uh, workable. So uh, people's hours don't change. It's just the hours aggregate that the, that the office is open. Uh, and it affects town hall and parks and rec. So uh, let's see. Um, Lastly, a couple of a um, couple of uh, big events coming up. We have Memorial Day events uh, the Sunday next Sunday night, which is the um, May uh, the twenty eighth of May. There's the vigil at Liberty Green. I think I, I, I was assigned to uh, head ex officio to be here last May, and I I, I I recommended it then, and I recommend it again. It's a wonderful, solemn event, but very important, you know for that particular holiday. And of course the parade happens the next day at two o'clock. The vigil uh, the night before on Sunday is at 7.30 p.m. And it's very brief, it's maybe 45 minutes. So, uh, and then June 6th, uh, June 4th, Saturday, June 4th, lots of Connecticut Trail Days events uh, coming up at Darrow, Darrow's Pond uh, Trails and also Asabachi Hills. So, um, a lot, you know, the summer has, is pretty much begun. So lots of events. Forward. Any questions? Any questions, Fran? What time are the Connecticut Trail events? Those um, are at varying times, and um, the town website has really good information on each of them. I think at Asabachi Hills is like three separate times in the morning, uh, and depending on how much trail you want to walk um, or go to watch or whatever, and uh, the uh, one over at um, Asabashi, I'm sorry, at uh, Darrow Pond. I think it's a three mile, that's a three mile walk. That's supposedly not difficult, but we know we've seen that all the time when you go hiking on the trailheads, right? Not difficult. <laughs> and, uh, um, on um, the 28th, are we honoring our veterans? Is that part so, of the. So for Memorial Day, it's really um, remembering those who have lost their lives um, in service of country. So so that's that event, that vigil. And okay. um, local veterans um, organize, the local veterans organizations, or and many um, youth groups participate in that that evening. Um, and of course, the phrase essentially being the same thing, just different format. OK, thank you. Sure. Any other questions for you? Thanks, Anne. Appreciate the update. Thank you. Next, we move on to our middle school students. We have Siam, Siam and Catherine. Good updates. All right, good evening, everyone. I'm Siam Connor, and we sound really well in the eighth grade. I'm going to give you some insight on what we have been doing and what will be taking place at Elms. So, coming up on June 8th, we have our beach or fun day for the eighth grade at Coach Beach. It's kind of like, like a field trip format. Students are paid a $55 fee, which is part of the bus. The ice cream truck, the food truck, and the cost of all the activities. By cost of all the activities, I mean just because the school hired a company, Eastern Mountain Sports, and the company is basically setting up activities all revolving around the team building, plus going to be a DJ at that event. So, <laughs> um, so the same day. And then that same day, back at the middle school, grades five through seven, we'll be having their fun day. And it's all going to be still like team building activities. It's going to be run by teachers the whole day, too. Um, pretty cool. The PTA was able to do like a teacher wish list kind of thing for teachers. And the teachers were able to request like items and other things that they wanted. And the PTA was able to request a lot of that for teachers. And on April 21st, we had our PTA sponsored glow dance. It was a glow and like neon themed dance. So it was dressed in the neon, there was like glow stick and other stuff. It was in the cafeteria, and then there were two dancers, one for the fifth and sixth grade, and the seventh and eighth grade, they were on the same day. And like I said, there was glow sticks, a DJ, there was a photo booth with props, and there was a small concession stand like snack for or something like that. We had our GOV, uh, students competing in a geography trivia game, like a ge geography trivia-based competition in their solar place class, and then finalists for every team were able to, were able to compete in our school-wide competition. Um, on May 12th, we had our step up day for the fourth graders. So the fourth graders from all the elementary schools in the district were able to uh, like take guided tours and ask questions to students in the leaders club who are also doing tours. 
And basically the students got to familiar, familiarize themselves with the school. And it was pretty cool. And then um, we have our class night coming up on June 13th for our class's graduation. So students will be given like speeches, they're advancing for the national anthem, and basically the same graduation class. And then kind of closer to that time, the eighth grade will have their breakfast along with getting the yearbooks. They'll be able to do the yearbook signing results and be a photo photo of them too. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, good evening. My name is Catherine Chepto, and I am also an eighth grader graduating this year. As graduation approach approaches, we are all we are all anxiously awaiting summer's arrival as the new high school year looms closer. Um, we recently selected our elective our elective courses for next year, along with getting our class level assignments. Um, along with course selections, eighth graders also had to make the big de big decision about who they wanted on their ninth grade senate. The, the students who feel as though they would like a chance to be on the Senate next year got four teacher signatures and 15 student signatures. And then we, the student body, voted on the top 10 people who we thought would be best fit for this position last year. Um, also recently, over the last two Mondays and Tuesdays, the middle school has had the SPACs with math, ELA, and for eighth and sixth graders, an NGSS for science. The SPACs went smoothly and students who did not finish in the de designated two hours have been working hard to make them up in, in designated times. Um, adding, uh, continuing on, the leaders from the PTA work together to bring some fun and spirit into our school last Friday with the Decades Day themed Spirit Day. Um, eighth graders were 60s, seventh graders 70s, sixth graders 80s, and fifth graders 90s. It was so cool to see all of these different and unique styles being displayed by students and how they interpreted each one. This spirit day brought a lot of laughs and fun, and it was a very successful day with lots of spirit and style. Um, adding on to the Leaders Club Step Up Day on June 12th, the Leaders Club is also planning on visiting the elementary schools in the coming weeks. Um, we're planning on visiting Niantic Center in Flanders on May 31st and Lily B. Haynes on June 7th. Our goal is to ease in with the fourth graders' worries about moving up to a bigger school and answer any questions they may have as incoming fifth graders. Along with Leaders Club, some other clubs that are currently going on, our gardening club working on the butterfly garden in front of the school to add some color, um, Camp Elm spring running and conditioning club, 7th and 8th grade volleyball, intramural basketball, and many, many more. Um, the middle school has all, is also holding an all-school assembly coming up on May 25th, where an artist at the residence is going to be coming to talk about social emotional goals and how they express their emotions and feelings through art. Great, thanks. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions? Great, and best of luck in graduation coming up shortly. Thanks. Very good. So then we we're moving on to the high school student representative, and here is doing double duty today, winning congratulations on your award. Uh, okay, so most of my report today is junior news because um, Manat and Brendan are obviously participating in ECCs for track, which is going well. So the first thing that I have to report about is junior prom, which was on May 6th at Water's Edge, and it was a big success. My Senate actually, we made some sort of like deal. So before spring break tickets were $75 and afterwards they were 85. And we made a lot of extra money from that, which is going to work towards prom next year. We had around 250 guests and there were not as many food options as we initially thought, but it was it turned out okay. And we booked the DJ from Winter Ball, and it turned out good. And we got a lot of positive feedback from that. We know another DJ if you need. <laughs> <laughs> so next thing is National Honor Society. They just accepted their first wave of juniors, and the second wave will be in the fall. But um, the first wave's induction is going to be June fifth at seven p.m. AP exams are over, so that took away a lot of our stress, and um, that went well, mostly. There was the AP Lit digital exam, which was digital for the first time. I actually took that one, and I personally did really like it online because handwriting three essays is not <laughs> that nice, but um, unfortunately, a few students did have issues, so they had to take the test again. Which is very rough. You hand them digitally. So um, originally the exam was supposed to be digital, but some students got kicked out of the program. Some students, their work just submitted, so they had to retake it on paper. 
That was a college board issue. No, it was yeah. 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 an issue. Yeah. 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 Really tough. Yeah. And I, I know, um, yeah. I don't think East Lyme students were the only students that that happened to across the country. So, we actually, they're better than most. Yeah. Most students have to get some of the entire classes. Oh, oh. Did they get extra credit or anything? <laughs> 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 we wish to. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Um, right. Next thing is officer speeches for the 2023-2024 school year Senate took place on Wednesday, and voting was done in history classes on Thursday and Friday. The results mm -hmm. were uploaded today, I am pretty sure, but we got feedback from students saying that they in a lot of their history classes, they weren't actually given the survey. Oh. So I know Miss Brush is talking to Miss Jenkins about that to see if there's anything that can be done. Um, Key Club also held their officer speeches for next school year, but their results have not come out yet. Um, Peers Reaching Out or Pro also just finished their round of nominations for the 2023-2024 school year, and those students will be added to a Google Classroom and um, schedule interviews for that. Um, a while before prom took place, we had our EOHS talent show, and that was a very fun event. I went with my friends, and I had a very good time, and I got a lot of positive feedback from that. Students were saying that it was a very fun event for only five dollars, and it was very fun to watch all the students perform. Um, the library has an update now, so the students need to sign a library pass before signing in. And I think that does make it a lot easier for the librarians because students come in and out without signing in. And I feel like that's a good thing, but some students complain about that, but that's everyone's, you know, no one's gonna agree all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, we just had our NGSS testing, which there was a couple problems with that because for some reason the school computer started updating while we were taking the exam but it saved our progress so we were able to log back in and continue perfectly fine so that was okay something technology yeah <laughs> um the class award ceremony is june 1st so students that um earned class awards will be invited to that tomorrow is that separate like senior like seniors are different than the I right no, no well, yeah oh, they should should oh, okay okay um, tomorrow, Cultural Awareness has a food festival, which is combined with the Art Expo from 6 to 8 p.m. So we'll be having food from several different restaurants around town, and it is combined with the traditional Art Expo. And the point of that is to introduce foods from different cultures. Um, senior Prom is June 3rd at the Marina Ballroom, and tickets are on sale this week. I think sales are over the end of this week, I believe. It's Thursday. Um, so junior, the junior Senate is planning for senior prom and other events, and we are now looking for venues. So we are looking to do port and starboard for prom and doing the dinner dance in the commons, hopefully, if we can get approval. Um, for parking spots, originally we decided that we would extend the senior parking lot for next year to the spots behind the track, and we got approval for that. And we thought it would be a good idea to allow students to be able to purchase extra raffle tickets, but there was an article written in the saga about how that isn't fair to students who can't afford extra raffle tickets, so we got rid of that. And now it is just one ticket per student, which is going to be $50. Um, and that's because there's not enough, there's more demand for spots than there are. Yes. Yeah, okay. But you're saying you expanded the number of yeah. yeah so now yeah, next year great. there will be more spots. Yeah, yeah. great. And the class of 2024 booked a stand for East Lime Day on July 15th with a game for throwing coins into glasses, where if you win, you can take the glasses home with you. And we are also working on partnering with the Shoreline Leos Club to have a car wash <laughs> fundraiser over the summer. Um, I know senior students are now applying for speaking at graduation if they're interested in giving a speech. And last thing, this Sunday, Girls Varsity for Crew won state champions. And the whole team won overall points because so many crew, 
like votes on that team medal first time since 2000. Yeah. That you saw those trophies yeah. that we were carrying around earlier? <laughs> okay. It's are phenomenal. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you. Thanks so much. Welcome to make a run for it. Thank you. Okay, so that closes our special reports. Moving on, we have one consent agenda item. I hear a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as posted. I'll second. 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 Oh, uh, we already second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Oh. Abstain. Uh, Candace said Jill. aye. Yeah, Jill is not there. Jill's on. Sorry. Uh -oh. So, okay, uh, consent agenda passes. That was, uh, for those of you at home, uh, as a recommendation to it. It's to authorize the superintendent to sign a one-year contract renewal with the school medical advisor, Dr. B.J. Sigkand, for the period of July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024. Okay, so now we'll move on to the discussion action items personnel. And the first agenda item is the proposed appointment of a director of athletics. Yes, it brings me uh, great pleasure uh, to introduce to the board uh, Kevin Marcoux, uh, who is our finalist for the athletic director position. After a comprehensive process and search, um, Kevin emerged uh, from the group and uh, just did a phenomenal job through all three rounds of our process. Uh, I think we are lucky to have him join us. He's uh, the current uh, AD in Killingly and has been in Killingly for many years. Um, has done a phenomenal job there, and I think he's going to elevate our sports programs. Um, we have great sports programs. It's going to take it to the next level for us working with our coaches here. So uh, I'll ask the board to, for a motion to um, approve uh, Kevin as our new AD. We will make a motion to approve the appointment of Kevin Marcou for the position of a 1.0 FTE Director of Athletics. I don't have a start date in here, though. July 1. July 1, 2023. Second. Any further comment? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Congratulations. Very, very, very excited to have you. Kevin, if you want to yeah, say a few words. Very excited to Introduce have. your wife and your, your daughter yes. as well, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so excited to get started. Um, superintendent Newman, every step along the way, incredibly professional, obviously a very serious process, and I'm very proud that I started. I want to introduce and thank and thank you, thank you for all the support. My wife Carrie is here, and brother Elizabeth. You know, one of the questions was how what would keep her happy? <laughs> I think she's actually wanted me. <laughs> it's a win-win for everybody. <laughs> um, seriously, I'm very, very excited to get started. East Lyme is a tremendous school district with a tremendous history in athletics and um, just the energy that, I, that I'm going to bring to the district and the expectations and the standards. State championships, those are two of my favorite words. That, I hear that, I hear. that is an incredible accomplishment. You're the best at what you do in the state, and that is hard work, dedication throughout the entire year, for years and years and years of a young person's life. And I've said many times, I'm in the kid business. My job is to give our kids, our kids, the very best experience. We owe it to them, or they get four years of high school. That's it. That's all they get. And it's our job to make sure that those four years are incredibly memorable. Most of them will not go on to play in college, let alone professionally. And so it's our job, all of our jobs, to make sure that they're, it's going to be just, just a great, great four years for them. And to make this community proud. You already are proud. I know you are uh, uh, with your sports and your teams. And we're just going to take it to the next level. So, again, thank you so much for your trust in me. We'll let you down. Welcome. Yes, some of our committee members are here too. I mean, Terry's back there, and Chris Olson was on our committee, and some other folks. And uh, you know, we had a robust uh, process. So I know Terry's excited and ready to go. And uh, Kevin and, uh, and Terry will be working on closely together. So 
Congratulations again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We'll let you all get home. Yeah, and yes. 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 I'll walk you out. Good night. Uh, you want to take the uh, yeah. 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 So the next um, order of business is discussion action 2023-2024 proposed non-union unaffiliated benefit wage schedule. Marianne is going to take us that I second but basically I mean just uh the overall you guys have the summary there in the increases for um uh, most everyone was two and a half percent we have uh one individual um that was brought in um in our uh, special ed department that was brought in at our lower salary level so we're trying to get that person up to a market rate, especially when there's some assistance um, underneath that person, which is close in salary. So that one is getting a four and a half percent raise. And then the only other changes are because of the minimum rate, minimum wage increase. So June 1st, it goes to $15, but then it starts changing every January. So starting January of 2024, it will change and it will change every January after that. And it's based on the employment cost index with of June 30th. So January's increase will be based on June 30th's index, which does not come out until probably sometime in August. So um, based on the previous year's indexes, pre previous quarters, it's been over a 5% increase. So with the lunch recess assistance, we decided to um, eliminate their first step because it was below minimum wage. And then we made the second step, um, we estimated about 5.2% and brought that to like $15.84. So that's really the only other major change so that we just um, didn't have to make a mid-year change to salaries and we could budget appropriately. So yeah, I'm pretty much has any questions. Any questions? Yeah. Sounds like good planning to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I would like to make a motion to approve the 2023-2024 proposed non-union unaffiliated benefit wage schedule. Mayor second. Second. Thank you, Kate. All the, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Motion passes. Great. Moving on to discussion action item, finance facilities and community. And we have uh, Dave here for the Miracle League field phase two discussion action item. Yes, you all yeah. heard yeah, about uh, when Dave came and presented a couple weeks ago um, and he has uh, gotten us the, the plans and specs which have been provided to Dr. Lund as well. Um, Dave's here for any questions. Anything else, Dave, you want to share? No, just the civil engineers were out on uh, Thursday to do their work, and I should have that in here shortly. So yeah. other than that, we're ready to get the funding in place, and we're ready to go as soon as we have our approvals. So we're good to go. And we wanted, we needed to bring this back so because we do need an approval from the board to move on. So that was why we have this here. I'm sorry, did Chris? Oh, oh, correct. I don't know, Chris, if you have anything you wanted to add to it or if you no, I had some minor comments that gave Dave and nothing significant. Otherwise, it looks really good. So, I can't remember for all the time. I had what the total what the total cost is. The building. It's um, it's being paid for by the Miracle League. Oh, yeah. The, the Miracle League is paying for that deal. No, I'm just curious on how Oh, God, I do guys. Um, I can't. I did, I did hear the question. Oh, oh how, so how much it's costing the mirror? Oh, it's going to be between two hundred and fifty and three hundred thousand. Okay, that's just curious. Yeah. Let's see the price tag. Yeah. Thank you. No, I need mean, to pay for it for yeah. sure. Yeah. Any other questions? It's a restroom and a storage facility that's being added. Is that what's happening? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go your motion. I would like to make a motion to approve the Miracle League Phase Two uh, construction as presented. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Oh, yeah. Just Jamie right abstains. Yep, from, yep, yep. Jamie abstain. As a director on that, yep. I'd like to. Yep. 
Okay, motion passes. Dave, thank you so much. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for all Thanks, Dave. The American League is doing it. Yeah, it's very cool. Amazing how quick they are moving. Okay, uh, next item is the 2023-2024 budget for discussion. And I think uh, Jeff had a few updates. Yeah, just um, since uh, great news with you know the budget uh, passing, uh, I just wanted to circle back um, on this. Um, we talked at the last meeting we're going to reduce to one elementary position, you know, at Nyack Center. Um, I want to make sure the board is aware we did um, go through the schedule for the technology teachers. We're still <laughs> planning on going from three elementary technology teachers down to two, and we can still fit in the schedule. Took some work, and two of our our, our teachers, our staff members did a great job helping us out. They got great minds for it. Um, and one was from Mr. Provo's building and one was from uh, Mr. Showman's building and um, helped us figure it out. So uh, we are able to spread the two of them across the three buildings and cover all the technology classes um, moving forward into next year. So that's good news because I know that question had come up uh, a while back. The other thing um, I want to, and we can, if we want, as we move into, you know, future, we can bring back that full list again of, you know, what, what's, uh, you know, where we've landed on, on everything. Um, but those were the two that were um, the bigger discussion items. One thing I wanted to bring forward because the para union had reached out to me, uh, we had established uh, those that were part of the negotiations committee. We had extended uh, an MOU with them for a year to, um, if they, cover for more than two hours, cover for a teacher. We ask if we're short staffed, we're short for sub, and we ask a paraprofessional to cover uh, for a teacher for more than two hours. We pay them an extra $30 above what they're, they're getting for the day. Um, very fair. Um, they asked us to extend that MOU uh, for another year. Um, I'm in full support of that, um, but I wanted to bring that to the board to make sure the board was, uh, you know, in support of that. And I can go back uh, to Chris Marjack, the union president, and say that, you know, we agree to extend it for another year. Something everybody's in favor of. Yeah, I wholeheartedly support that. And I'm curious, is there a reason why it's like a year-to-year -year MOU versus just a standard practice and part of our... Yeah, we're going to make it one more year because what we're going to go into negotiations again with them. And we thought okay. it was just should become part of the negotiation process okay. um, and be discussed you know, that way. So it's going to be... So that's the main, uh, the main reason. So... Do we have an idea how often that happens? Um, not as much this year as it did the previous year. Uh, you know, the, there is the, that issue of, you know, the more we do it, we're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul remember, because we're taking them from the work that they're supposed to be doing sort of thing. So that's not always as good. So it's kind of a, you know, one of those last resorts pieces, but it does happen uh, regularly. Um, but it's good compensation. It's important compensation for them. They're going above and beyond. They're helping us out. So they should be rewarded for that. So I think that will probably come up through negotiations for further conversations too. So I just want to bring that forward and, and let you know that that's uh, was my record. So I'll get back in touch with Chris Marsh. I can let her know that Ford's in support of that and we'll move forward. Um, so that was it. I kind of just wanted to have an open dialogue again about you know the budget. Um, if we want to, you know, we'll do some more work. Obviously, and have some more conversations as we move into the summer. We'll keep you apprised as well when we hit our June fifth and our June nineteenth meeting to see. You know where our final kind of kindergarten numbers are coming in, especially over the summer, and I'm sure we'll to need to potentially have some more discussions as to you know if there any changes. So that's pretty much. Any questions? Yeah. I just think we were so lucky with the winter and the heat and all of the yes, snow right. and all of yes. those things. Yeah. It just yes. It's so uh, lucky. Helped to eliminate that deficit and uh, mm -hmm. all the good work that Marianne and everybody did. So, well, Jeff, I had a question. Somewhat related to this, right? The non lapsing account. What's the word? Yes. So that's down in the town's hands. We sent it down to the board of selectmen. Um, I haven't seen anything yet, but we um, we didn't have a meeting. Uh, we, we don't have this meeting. Our second meeting of the month. So it probably will show up uh, first meeting in June. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll circle back with, uh, yeah. with Kevin. Yeah. I think and, I mentioned uh, something about. That look at in my report, so I think they they're expecting to see something. So, okay, and that goes just remind me. It goes to the board of selectmen and then goes to board of finance. Is that the order? Yes, that's what it should do. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we we proposed it. Okay. Great. So we'll have that question. Thoughts? Questions? Okay.
Um, the next uh, agenda topic: discussion action on student-based healthcare, uh, student-based healthcare partnership. Jeff, I think you. Yeah, I put in the uh, weekly update. I'm excited to report that um, we have uh, a partner. Um, CHC uh, Community Health Center has agreed to partner with us. Um, so we can um, begin, uh, we're starting at the high schools, we're starting small, um, and then hopefully grow from there. And it'll just be mental health support services, not in place of, just in addition to what we currently have uh, at the high school. So uh, kind of like an added bonus. And this is, once it gets established and we start to um, have kids that are, you know, being seen or, or partaking in it, um, that's when we would be charging family insurance plans and so forth to offset the cost of it. So there'll be some initial fees up front. So uh, it's a rough estimate right now, but it's about 22,000 in initial fees to get it going. And I think it's well worth uh, us establishing it and then growing it from there. And eventually I'd like to bring, and we'd all like to bring in medical services as well um, and have that done too. So, and at both the high school and the middle school. Uh, so I think it's, it's just gonna help add uh, you know, more services to our students in the world of mental health uh, and counseling supports. So it's a good start. Yes, Hillary Jamie. Do you have the details on the construct? Are they going to be in the Monday through Friday in what area? Not yet, Jill. That that's, yeah, that's, um, I would like to say five days a week um, It would be the plan, um, mm -hmm. but we haven't drilled down as of yet as to exactly how many days a week it's going to be, but the plan would be that five days a week. That's, that's so my plan. That's probably starting in September, though, they will be in place. Exactly. Next September. Exactly. So you have to work out the space. You have space here in this building for them. Yep, we we're already working. I mean, well, we're short on space, but we're going to find the space. So Mrs. Kelly's already uh, investigating that, and uh, we will have a space. How many practitioners do we have in the building beside each other? So. And it'll start with one, and then we'll have to grow it from there. How quickly can we grow it? So, as quickly as possible. That's the goal. We just have to get students, you know, into the um, process so it can be funded. Will they so. be able to walk in on, by themselves? Eventually, yeah. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that would be... Uh, what we would want to have happen as, as well as work with the families and et cetera. So, so a couple of questions. During the school day, after the school day, or a hybrid of both? Right now, during the school day. Um, we'll see about expansion. I, I so they, they could be, we, be scheduled during a class or during free time? Well, I'm, just trying, I'm picture, trying to picture it in my head. Yeah, they, they could schedule a time either they have a study hall. As soon as a study hall, they could go see, or if there's a crisis of sorts, they would go could go directly down. Um, it's that split and shared time between either one of our counselors or forming that relationship with a counselor now from CHC. And CHC is providing the counselor? Yes, correct. And they're, staff members. they're doing the standard educational background checks and everything. They would have to there. do everything. Okay. Yep. Um, and I'm going to say, I know how hard it is to find some, a counselor or therapist right now. It's impossible to find somebody. They have no time for anybody. Um, they don't. Counselors yeah, are really yeah, hard to get very an appointment. Hard to get. Yes. Yeah, um, therapists in general, you can't get an appointment. Um, do we, I mean, I know that we already have problems with our students getting in to see counselors and therapists. And I know at the park, the person we have at Park and Rec, that person has a long waiting list. Yeah. Um, I'm foreseeing the same thing here, probably. Yeah, that's, so, I hope, so, yeah, hopefully. so my question was going to be like, is CHC going to have a hard time finding people? Because, I mean, I know like teachers, therapists have been just dropping like flies. Like they have not said anything okay. about difficulty in they're finding. Gonna, they're going to use as their primary. Just my experience of working with CHCs, what they tend to do, what they tend to get is a lot of students that are just out of graduate school or a couple years out of graduate school, and then those people will work and they're very dedicated. More than likely, they'll stay. Because it's we've got to be a special person to work with the community health center, in my experience. So I I don't think they'll I don't think there'll be any problem. The thing will be is will there come a point when we transfer them over under under total care of CHC and the parents to take them to the appointments? But there's a lot. Yeah, the expansion possibilities. I'm just hoping are... that we don't start it and then we can't get somebody staffing it. Like I would hope I would hope okay. that they would before yeah we we get even to that point, they've got that person ready to go, commitment. Um, that's what we'd be looking just for. The worst you, case to have somebody start and then leave. And you don't want to have exactly. turnover in it. Yeah, okay. that's the last thing, especially in the world of supporting, you know, counseling and mental health supports. Okay. Um, students become attached and that's important. So I will be, once we have the full parameters, uh, I will bring that forward. 
maybe you can have CHC come and talk a little bit further about it. So can I clarify what it is you're looking for us from tonight? In, in, in action to begin those discussions. To begin discussions. Exactly. Okay. To go into those initial proposal stage of you know formulating a partnership, and then I would bring that back to the board for kind of finals. What are the fees for 2000? What is that thing? That, that covers the cost of the person. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that's why be cautious because you have multiple people right out of the gate. We're going to be funding it because they have to get that initial startup. So there's where we're going to have to cover those initial fees. And I'm using that rough estimate of 22. It could it could okay. vary, but that was a number that they gave uh, they gave us. Okay. So yeah, it's exciting. It's ex yeah. extremely exciting. Yeah. So it's it's, it's it. the start that we we wanted and uh, want to grow it from there. Um. So that'll be the work. Very good. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Does anyone want to make a motion? I will, but I'm going to change it up a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> motion to have the superintendent engage in conversations to establish a partnership between Community Health Center and Eastline Public Schools for the implementation of a student based health care program at Eastline. A second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Great. No, that's great. Um, a big step forward. So that's that's great. Okay. So moving on, uh, discussion action items instructional. So the first is discussion board of ed initial 2023-2024 goal planning. So if everyone remembers, um, you know, six months ago or so when we did the goal process, we said. Let's start earlier um, and let's kind of have a process to get to a point and with a with a goal for our goals before the school year or when the school year starts, we actually have our goals in place and that we can kind of brainstorm more and make sure there's outcome metrics uh, or desired outcomes or something along those those lines. So um, this topic is just around. So we're meet, we have our workshop on June 19th. So we're going to wait till the school year, graduation of the 14th, right? 15th. Middle school. Oh, I'm sorry. No, yeah, middle school's 14th. High school's middle school's 15th. 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 Okay. Wednesday and Thursday. So uh, the 19th, school's out. So we don't have kind of that day to day stuff. And I think we have a little more time so we can think about what our goals are. Um, so that's the, the 19th. Brainstorm a bit, have our workshop brainstorm. Then in July, or depending on where we are, the July meeting, we can iterate a little bit. So kind of have a little time to think about it, come back, iterate over the summer, maybe once, maybe twice. But then by September, when the school year starts, we actually have our goals or we go and approve our goals. So that's the, the hope for the plan. Um, and it gives us a little more time. And if we do them over the summer, there's not other things. Well, there's personal things going on, but uh, not not school as much school. So that was the thought. So they ask or request now. One is any questions, and then two is just if between now and June nineteenth or over the next few weeks, you know, think about what types of goals or is there any things that you want. Um, if you look at our goals from this year, but. Remember our goals this year, we didn't have the desired outcomes, outcome metric piece to it. We just were rushing to kind of, it was already, I can't remember, November, December by the time we were about to that. Um, so this year, if spend so we can spend a little time, do some thinking around um, what an outcome metric might look like for a giving goal as well. Um, not that you need all the answers or anything by the 19th, but just if you can do a little thinking about um, about that, that would be. Great. So, um, thoughts, questions? Eric, are you thinking six o'clock on the 19th? That we have a, it is a meeting. Yeah, we have a meeting scheduled yeah. for that day. So, I think we have, we're going to go through test scores. Exactly. We do some formative and summative assessment reviews um, that Inlis um, is working on. Um, so, we can bring some, uh, some final end of the year data to you. That would be the only agenda item in yeah. the plan, and then we could roll into a workshop. Yeah, and we thought that that actually feeds in well with the goals, as you start seeing some data and information, kind of lets you think about what goals you might be thinking about for the following year. Sorry. Could you help us with that a little bit? I think just maybe ask some clarifying questions. So we, or at least I would have a sense of what you want 
me to be thinking about so that I could provide something that's kind of substantial rather than vague? I'm not sure exactly what we're. Yeah, sure. I mean, I open to anybody else's thoughts. I mean, we can start and think about our goals from this year. Do you want some examples of what like a, an outcome metric might look like? Well, we never just... got to goals this year though. We... Well, we have goals. We just don't have desired outcome, outcome metric. We don't have the measurable piece to right. it. We have the, um, we do have the goal. Right. So we would be reestablishing, we would be establishing goals for next year earlier. Much and earlier. Then, yeah. But, Okay. No, go ahead. Well, okay. So are we going to be establishing our goals in a month or? Yeah, so I'll go. So the 19th is that, the, the, what I'm asking between now and the 19th is just, you know, think a little bit. We can send the goals from last time, even just think about what are some outcomes that you might be hopeful for. The 19th is, is free. We're going to, it's really an open discussion about areas and it could be very focus, specific. Well, I think that's we can... really good. And I think that's what we're all, we're a group of divergent thinkers. And when we get together, we just, the sky's the limit for what we come and up I with. And I think for the think... 19th, a little bit of that's okay because let's brainstorm a bit and allow that kind of openness. But then we do want to start locking. And that's where the July and August is. Now we have that list. Let's see if we can collectively take a little time you step back you think about it and think about your own prioritization whatever and then kind of pick some goal of Ju july august to implement to finalize goals for so I, I'll, I'll tell you what i think would help if you would let us know what we picked for our goals because i'm vague on what that was and if we could just come up individually with anecdotal evidence that would support our process toward achievement of those goals that we identified for this year and then from that, then we would be able to take our next step for what we would be working on and then how we would measure it maybe more effectively. That's what I would suggest, if that makes sense. It does, I'm just trying to think of the next step. So we'll send out the goals. We can share the goals so everybody has them. So I think that's a point from that what we had this year. And then I just wanna make sure I, did you want- Well, then each of us could, review them and then we could say well i thought we did a really like me personally i would say i think we did a really good job on these ideas and this is some evidence that would support that so anecdotal notes and then from that then i think we could identify cl more clearly how we would delineate and differentiate and see like yeah. we're, we're doing it we're hitting yeah. the ball out of the park yeah. or yeah we need to you know work on some steps to get there makes total sense and I, I think where we may as you start looking at the goals from this year the goals might not change dramatically for next so. year yeah. but adding that outcome metric of what's the desired outcome what are the outcomes that you want that's going to change right. could change a lot so we can look at what does each of these goals really mean because that kind of lays out what are you really trying to get to Absolutely. with each of those goals versus Absolutely. the state. I just think it would help, at least for me, I can't speak for anybody but me, um, the clarification piece is yes. really important. And the, the, I think that I um, agree, right, to kind of bring a little bit more structure to the process and just to comment to maybe extend that a little bit is um, I can totally appreciate, right, your comment about the day and I urge you have a group of um, just uh, idea generators and, <laughs> and and they are I mean and, and definitely some really interesting and, and good ideas um and I think you know in terms of kind of structuring that a little bit as as this group is thinking about those and using the reflecting of the goals that we already have um I think that that makes sense um tie it around kind of um you know, so we can align around like the objective of, you know, the goals that we're striving to achieve without kind of, um, you know, having to do all the homework per se, right? Like, I I think as we're thinking about, you know, what our objective is that, that of this goal that we want to achieve, like, what do we need to get there um, in terms of, you know, what we can realistically 
um, do or what we would need to kind of make happen in order to kind of achieve those outcome metrics or or get there. So you know, I think I think we have some really sort of um, some are some definitely more tactical, yep. right? Yep. But then some are, are are very aspirational. They they have a whole different look and feel, and I think it's probably a good idea to keep both of those right yep. behind yep. the goal yep. Yep. in order. Um, you know, we have policy as major, you know, kind of tactical goal, and yep. there was, um, you know, we drove that to uh, completion, right? Where I um, and but policy you know, doesn't start to come off the table, right? So there's, um, you know, and I mean, you know, I think we're all going to give that thought to kind of what, what the buckets of um, goal opportunities are, but just kind of that we can. Yeah, but I think, you know, as I reflect on what you're saying, you're right. I think there's going to be some goals, like policy, you're right, tax, like we could lay out. We want to have the 1000 series reviewed by this day, 2000. I mean, those are metrics to get them done. Here, here's what we want to review to get them done. And so some of them are going to be a lot less or a little more kind of thought strategic or thoughtful or whatever words you want to use in terms of the big picture. And uh, your outcome metrics may look a little, little different than that. But then you might have the tactics, the, the piece to get between the goal and the outcome metric is a series of tactics. Yeah, no, in order for to sure. get that, I mean, right? it's so that's maybe a, one of those tactics that we attach to some of those goals. Right, you're right, right. We, can you tell that I'm waiting? <laughs> um, this is still a half baked thought. Uh, and I don't know the degree to which we as a board want our goals to be very tightly tied to the individual or like district school improvement plans that our admin are working on. Um, if we are kind of indexing for the latter, I do think it would be helpful to know, like, from each of our school admin, what are the top two things that are keeping you up at night about next school year? Or <laughs> yeah, we're gonna limit it to two. So I wanna keep us narrow to focus, but or you know, what's like if you had to pick two to three things that you want to just level up and execute excellently next year, what are those things? Because I think, you know, there's different hats that we wear as board members. And at the end of the day, like we're not the practitioners that are in schools. We don't have that like intimate knowledge of, you know, the day to day on the ground. And so I, I don't want to create additional work for admin at this point in time. And I do think there might be some merit in at least a few of our goals. I know we're going to try to keep them limited this year, but um, really being intentional about, intentional about having them be like closely aligned and in service of what our admin is really looking to achieve. It's a good, good talk with peace, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Other thoughts? Completely resonant about yeah. the whole statement that you just had and you're thinking about, you know, is that could be incorporated as like our one of our objectives that we're, you know what I'm saying? So where are they where they are tying to and and helping us choose those priorities and that completely makes sense. Okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So um in terms of next steps or action so we'll send out the goal to everyone from this year so when he has those readily available we'll ask uh, the administration to come up with in their respective roles what are the top couple of areas that keep them up at night or they really want to make a big will have a big impact or change or something that they really care about you know, okay expanded and just yeah really? okay yeah. So what are what are the couple ideas, the two things that you really um, are thinking about, and and especially ones, if you can, if there's anything where the board of ed can really have an impact with you and help you and partner with you on that, um, and then we'll try to collect collect that. Well, we'll send out the goals and we'll try to collect that information, and then for the 19th we can have that information and everybody has started to do some thinking we'll send out the 
we'll send out the goals soon and then we'll also send them as pre-read for the 19th just so it's it's fresh in everybody's mind and then we'll we'll go through the 19th um and the 19th will probably be we probably will go in a lot of different ways probably on the 19th um but the hope by the end of the 19th we start to have some focus and then give us a chance to step back catch our breath reflect and then go to the July meeting uh, where we can maybe spend and, and focus a little bit more. I work for everyone. Yeah. Okay, so that's the goal planning. So then um, the next topic is somewhat, it's a, a little bit of a reflection on the past six or nine, six or eight months or whatever. You know, talking to I think a number of you at different times. One of the things, you know, we have we we spent a lot of time together, but it was a lot of time almost on exclusively on budget and solving the budget. And the meeting, our last meeting where we had the um, middle school talk about the fifth grade and the strategy, that was for me one of the best meetings we've had in a long time because we were talking about education and things and impact that really make a difference other than budget, which was, um, you know, it was exciting to me. And, and, and so I, you know, was doing some reflecting and talked with Jeff a little bit about, you know, do we need a more systematic approach to our agendas so we don't get sidetracked too far when a topic comes up? which happens in budget or whatever, but there's some things that we do need to kind of keep going. So I put a, a first pass, draft, whatever, uh, together of some topics that of just what we want on our agendas and, and this we can delete, add, um, augment in any way, um, but just came up with some ideas and I'll, I'll just um, pass those around. Nope. Well. Short one. Here. You share this too. Yeah. And we'll share it. Um, and it's, we're going to share it electronically as well. Oh, Chris, could you uh, just give me permission to share my screen? If you don't mind. Chris, can you hear? Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Thank you. Okay, so um, here is just some thoughts, and um, interested in other thoughts. So we just talked about the first one, which is goals, and in general. So each year, if this works, uh, this year, you know, brainstorm workshop in June, revise in July, August, and finalize, of course at the first board meeting of the new school year. So that would kind of be our cadence, hopefully from a goals, we just had the discussion at that first. Next, um, one reflection on the, the budget is each year we go and start having a discussion in November. And some of the ideas we come up with might take 12 or 24 months to implement. And we talk in November and we say, oh, well, that, would, that would be interesting, but there's no way we can implement it for the next year. So then we kind of let it go. And then we go to the next November and we have that same idea. And then we kind of iterate, go, go year after year and saying, I don't know if we can do that. So having a, a workshop in July, not rolling up what we had, you know, what the roll up looks like or any of that, just really talking about, are there any big ideas as we think about our district that we want to think about that could be do differently or take it up just as an example, which is one we've talked about before is, can you offer an AP class across districts or something like there's some AP classes we don't offer that other schools do. Can we have a, a class that is virtual that we would offer that Waterford, I'm making this up, Waterford has AP macroeconomics and we don't, can we offer AP macroeconomics to our students as well? It might be taught by a Waterford teacher or something, but it kind of expand our curriculum. 
it could be something like that. Like how, what would we need to do to do that? Now, to give an example is we have different block schedules. So if you're doing it during the year, it actually means you got to change block schedule, all that stuff. Well, that takes a while to implement and everything. So those are the, the types of ideas um, and just have some type of brainstorm. And then also in that discussion, take a we for this July, um, take a look at our budget from this past year. And do we want to, we've used this process for a few years, but I don't know if we want to take a fresh look at it and maybe take a change for kind of how we do the budget. Um, another reflection, bullet three, is one of the things, again, with the middle school update from last meeting is there's a couple, you know, for those of us who don't have students in that in that particular school or it's been a little while, sometimes we lose track of what, how, what's even going on in the school in terms of, oh, how many Kivas are there? And what, are, you know, okay, I know we kind of can't remember and what's that, is there looping, is there not looping? Like we, we lose track of all of that. And um, so getting, you know, having regular updates from each of the principals um, on a quarterly basis, you rotate each of us so it's not to make our meetings. Uh, you could have, you know, January high school, February middle school, March elementary or something like that. But that's just, again, a thought. Um, another thought is around our committee meetings. And we have, I think we sometimes struggle with our committee meetings starting at 430. I think we struggle to get, it's tough to get here at time. When we do have our meeting scheduled at 430, that means that, you know, by eight o'clock, some people have been here three and a half hours already, and you start to burn out and get tired, and it impacts our regular meetings. Thought, and again, this is, we can brainstorm on this as well, but a thought is, we I, think, I know for me, and I think I, is that Mondays are, are board of ed nights. So every, you know, family, whatever, everybody knows Monday. It isn't always a board of ed night, but everybody knows don't do any, you know, Mondays I'm occupied unless I say I'm not. And so can we uh, maybe have regular meetings on the one Monday and the other Monday, maybe you have committee meetings. And we're not all in all the different committees, so it wouldn't mean that every Monday you have a meeting, but just so that you can have focused time and maybe fresher time on that. Again, just, and I don't know if this is, these are the right things. I just want to try to get, again, a more systematic way of, of doing our agenda. And then some other updates, we have, have a now a full-time athletic director, having an athletic director come and give us updates uh, more frequently. We have uh, Chris gives some updates, uh, director of facilities and getting updates from him as well. And then aquatics, food services, maybe a couple of times a year, give updates, but kind of lay those out. There might be others might not agree with some of these, but the, the, the thought is to almost have a schedule of a calendar of, this is when we do these, uh, different items and then and not lose this and then as other things come in they fill in obviously other pieces of the meeting um, so I don't know if that made any sense but interested in anyone's thoughts comments just overall I think it's some good thinking and planning I think you're on the right track and I think that for others, I think the consent agenda, we can use that more than we do already, but just to add things to that to expedite our process as much as possible. I think the deliberation discussions are good, but sometimes we don't really need to talk about some things. If whatever that's the case, I think put those on the consent. But I think you're, you're doing a good job, Eric, so thank you. If I can just I think, add, oh, go ahead. I, just, I think oh. there's a great list of, for us to start thinking about later. Um, you've done a lot of um, I think kind of structured thinking and and also kind of getting ahead of, um, you know, just to kind of have an idea of where we would be going with agendas going forward. 
and maybe also kind of build in some opportunity for sort of you know pre-thinking about what we want to see out of those agenda items. Um, so yeah, as you're kind of going through, um, and, you know, thinking about you know just kind of building these out a little bit, you know, whether it's kind of stemming from something you're thinking about or maybe a little bit different or. So, you know, I think if we could talk about how we want to kind of carve some of these things out, yeah, that would be good too. This is, I, but I like the, the, the list and, you know, it's getting us thinking, I think, about some of the right things. And if this is a direction we would have interest in, we can have a workshop. I don't know if we have a retreat workshop, whatever, where we can talk about us as a board and scheduling things out and being a little more, um, be a little structured around topics and changing. So I'm gonna go under other, one of my favorite things when I first joined the board was the board of ed used to go to all the schools. And oh, yeah. we used to get presentations from the students. And I know now us being live and everything, it causes a little bit of a logistics problem, but if we could get the students in here to talk to us, about what they're doing or what they're not doing and what they'd like to be doing. I'd love to hear the student voices in here and bring back those kids that we used to do. So what did, I'm just curious, what did they talk about? So like, when, when I first came on the board, we would go to each school mm -hmm. um, and the principals and the students would put on a presentation for us. Okay. When we were the what middle school they, kids yeah. talked about uh, Skyping, with the service people in uh, overseas, okay. uh, the little kids, what I remember going to Flanders and they taught us how to dissect a frog on the old boards. <laughs> they interviewed us for the news radio station. It was just all these cool things that the students did with us so we could see what they were doing and we could hear their voices. So if we could yeah. get them back in here to talk to us again, I would love that. That's great. And that's on, so that's right. Different than what we have, the current, um, what do we call them, special Represent representatives uh, come in. They were just telling us more. No, this is them. about like presentation, like here's the content. Interact with up. us and show yeah. us what they were learning. Yes. Um, like when they showed us how to dissect a frog on the screen, I was like, holy cow, there's no blood, there's no smell, yeah. it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and it stinks. It's like yes. Well, they just do how to do it. They interviewed you for their radio station. It was oh, great to talk yeah, to the kids and see what they were doing. Yeah, and I miss that. Yeah. And I'd love if we could bring that back. That's great. But would that be okay with the staff, the teaching staff? Well, I think it would. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. I, no, I'm I just think like, it would be. Yeah, yeah especially place. students. Students love to. Come and kind of present. Oh, I know students who I'm just you know, know um, staff it would be fantastic. And yeah, I, I was just gonna add, I mean, yeah, I I, I like this because we kind of you know it, it's that winter snapshot of like you know December or January, I should say, through like March, where we just get consumed with budget. And I feel like we we lose sight of most other agenda items and like seven things that are so happening in schools. The purpose is the kids. Yeah. yeah. So if we could get them in here to remind yeah. us and remind yeah. everybody else what yeah. our purpose yeah. is, I would yep. I would like that. It brings sure. energy to the yeah. yeah. Say, it just reminds you why you're yeah. here. Let's say one other thing. I I would really like that as an individual, this is just my is periodically have an opportunity to just go sit in a classroom, pretend I'm a mom and I'm visiting the class for the day. I don't know if they still do that in elementary anymore, or we don't. No, but we can set up we can set up visits though, Jill. We yeah. did that um you know, not that long. Yeah, not yeah, back in October. Why, why don't we do that anymore? That was like huge. Great parents Different going. Issues. Yeah, yeah safety, security. We yeah, we yeah. don't really yeah. Yeah, I was safe really when I was in elementary, I guess. But we can. I just assume that was. Let's set up another another visit. Um, you know, I mean, I, I just want to sit in the classroom. I want to serve, so I know what's going on. It's yeah. fun. It's really yeah, fun. I mean, yeah, I, I, that's I right. Yeah, can you can't. Do it. I would. I would die. Yeah. It's worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. So you're saying we get permission? No, he's saying no, like, he'll set up, set up a schedule. Yeah, I'd be walking through buildings <laughs> on the But still, the point the though, it would, it, you know, it would be nice if there was a special 
event, you know, we're invited to the veterans event over at the middle school, which is really nice. But then also, if there was you something like, you know, like a little play, play, or if there's, uh, you know, now is when they're doing their um, choral singing and that kind of thing. To show up as a board member would be really fun. To, and I remember going to my kids' concerts, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But we don't do that. We don't have that opportunity in the ship. Yeah, as a, as a non-parent, you're not... You don't have that. You don't have an idea what's going on. And that's not and that's not classroom. That's just events. Yeah, I went to a class <laughs> You got too much to scrub. Still, I'm trying to get you in there. Board of members. Then did you staff versus students dodgeball every day at the middle school? I think, yeah, yeah. It was dodgeball. I think it was dodgeball. It was in, yeah, or it was in a, a, staff for students. Oh, volleyball. Volleyball. Yeah. 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 Volleyball. Yeah. 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 Dodgeball might not be good. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> It was in was it in the newsletter? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was in the newsletter. Yeah. Very proud. But the job yep. came in? No, the, it was teacher versus staff, staff oh. versus student volleyball tournament. And who won? So students. So you want to take on the teachers? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> students, maybe. Teachers, no. <laughs> students will be teacher. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this is under consideration. I know I'm pushing hard on this, and I may be the only board member, but no, it, it ties no, we in. Did, we, just... did it, we did it in the spring or the uh, fall, in the fall yeah. to highlight the coaches and the work that they do in the classroom. So, yeah, we did. Was it a tour, or did we, were you allowed to stay for an hour or two? We did. Well, well we did yeah. um, some rotations okay. through classrooms to see a coach. You know, we had oh, free meeting. Coaches. We talked about what we were going to saw, and we used the lens of the coaching cycle to go in, so that you guys had an opportunity to see. You know, when we're talking about coaching, what does that actually look like in the classroom? Okay, so we can do that again. But there's other. Oh, yeah. You know, some other areas, depending on you. where we have we land with board goals, we might want to align visits to the board goals and give Absolutely. you guys some context around some of the, the work. Nice alignment, yeah. If I was a parent, and I'm just curious, I'm on a roll now, and I apologize. As a parent, could I come in and observe if I ever wanted to, or is that you, totally you have a job? you have a board of it policy around that? Okay. Well, Twelve twenty five actually. Mr. Showman, I just talked a little bit about it today. So okay. there's a whole policy and regulation around visitations and that, uh, you know, why reasons, educational disruption, good, bad. So fingerprints, background check. Uh, all of the above. Yeah. That means yeah. our Pending on, depending so on the budget. We, I'm so, sorry. So my that, I okay. apologize. Um, why don't everybody do some thinking on this? We can bring this up as an, another topic. Think if there's some things that we do want to make sure. Talk about student presentations and presenting, ensuring that we hit the consent agenda, these on the right. If there are things that we want to hear or do and where we actually have more of a board of ed calendar, um, that obviously gets filled with other things as well, but just to have a recurring uh, systematic way of approach, that would be great. So if, uh, let, we can kind of move on now, but if everybody does some thinking and we can talk about it another time as well. Okay. What would be your, I guess I'm curious, so I, I'm a, my two cents, big fan of the structure, love that there's like a huge <laughs> proactive emphasis on this. In your ideal world, what would be like the ideal timeline for us to say, okay, we're going to kick off this new structure? For this school, new school year. Okay, so we're talking about September. Yeah, cool. yeah. A lot of, as you probably are seeing with goals there, I'm starting to think is, you know, we're approaching the summer now. and like if September, even though our school year, our, our calendar year technically starts July 1st, our real year is whenever the school starts, end of August, early July, September. Yeah, July. Yeah. 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 Great. Let's yeah. do it. Okay. Okay. Now we are moving on to discussion action item policy and Elisa is going to lead us through. Um, three okay. first reviews. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think these are just first reviews. I don't think yeah, they're all yep. um, motions. So the first set is uh, first review, uh, suggested first review for policies in the 1000 series. Um, they there's two policies there, um, 1325 advertising and promotion for these, and 1330 community use of school facilities. Um, provide comments and suggestions back to um, Jeff. There's 
uh, just one comment on the 1325, if you remember, as part of FFO, we talked about um, uh, advertise or marketing and branding, and we kind of had two actions. One was, which is to look at our social media, which uh, has been done and or it's being addressed and being looked at. And the other is to make sure our policies are in place that if we want to start having some advertising that comes on. So 1325 is important for that um, part of that discussion. So if everyone gets a chance to read it because we do want to hopefully start using it. Um, yeah, and I mean, we have to right? So we look at it in April, but we didn't know that the it was last re revised in 2012. So encourage you to. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Um, the next is in the 6,000 series, uh, first review, um, course, I suggest revision and date change um, to bring it up to date in 6172.3, equivalent education under parental direction. And then there are, there is one in the 9,000 series, first review, of course, suggested re revision of policy number 9325, meaning conduct. Any questions, comments? Thanks, Alisa. Okay, uh, that closes our discussion action items for the meeting and moving on to administration reports and Jeff. Uh, yeah, a couple items. Uh, the first being uh, Dr. Lund and I, Chris, have been uh, in conversations, um, Chris, more importantly, with uh, Salem recently about the idea of potentially overseeing um, Salem's facilities and operations, kind of like what we have with food services, um, yeah. looking at, at a model. So Chris has spent uh, two separate occasions now. Chris, I'll let you kind of share, Chris, uh, and obviously we'll, further discussions have to be had and, and you know, for the for partnership. And this really should go to FFO to start. So we will start it at our next FFO meeting. But you know, Chris has uh, provided some analysis work for uh, Salem already. Um, kind of went up and visited the school, the school, and kind of looked around and found what deficiencies are, are present, what's good, what's bad, what's working. Um, so, in a, in a nutshell, we're looking at the idea potentially of of a partnership uh, that would, uh, you know, Salem would pay us for potential some potential oversight. How that's defined is still need to be still needs to be discussed. With the board and FFO, and Chris and I had a conversation with Brian Hendrickson today um, about that. So uh, a second, uh, third conversation, really. So Chris, anything you want to so. add to that? Yeah, yeah, for now. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're uh, where initial conversations are being had. We'll see. Uh, we'll bring that to FFO for some further conversation. But um, Chris, for something that we can update to with some initial conversations were being uh, being discussed. So an exciting opportunity potentially. So that's uh, underway. Um, we talked a little bit about that policy, you know, 1325 and, and marketing. Marianne and I, um, we went back a couple of years back. Um, it just never got off the ground where we kind of halted just because of logos. We, we stopped the board and we stopped it. We didn't want, we got nervous about what logos we could potentially see putting on the field or not putting on the field. But we, we need, and hence the change in this and adjustments to this policy, it's, we need to move in that direction starting to look at raising some dollars and, and having scoreboards, uh, new scoreboard, we need a new scoreboard for the baseball field and this new scoreboard for the football field as well. So marketing that out and having some, you know, whether it be Dunkin' Donuts as an example or some other you know, branding that's associated with it would help offset the cost. So there's a company that uh, we're investigating a little bit further. And that's another piece we'll talk about it at FFL or next yeah, FFL I, meeting. I contacted them because um, I think the old, um, that old email address I had Probably that person's not there anymore. Yeah. It's worked well for Stonington. Stonington's, yeah, Stonington. done it. Yeah. So we, we've been able to be in touch with Stonington to see um, what's the um, um, the benefit of, uh, they've been with, doing it for years now, yeah. and they reap some benefits uh, from it. So we're going to be looking into that, so that'll come up at FFO as well. Um, and additionally, a uh, great uh, opportunity to be on the baseball field again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was really nice. Uh, we get to see the home run. Um, Chris and I, Chris, we were over there. 
Oh, oh, it's like five minutes late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. So we get to see that. Um, so it's, it's great. It's great to see the kids back on that field and they were excited. Um, and we will now you know, kind of shut it back down. It's not going to be used this summer uh, at all. And we'll let the grass really grow in and then we'll be ready to go uh, for, for next year. So we're excited about that. So, yeah, so that's one question yeah. on the baseball field. How do we keep the geese off? The that's a great question. Yeah, those plastic, you know, well, they don't really work after they work for a day or two and then they don't really work. Geese get used to any air can. The only thing that really works is the live dog. Yeah. It's a dog? Yeah. Let it run around the border <laughs> collie or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a mascot? I don't know. Is there any just get the bird sounds from here over to there? Will that help? Does our new athletic director have a dog? He can just let him run down there. <laughs> we'll see. It's worth a shot. Maybe yeah. just dog barking speakers? Let's go with Lumber Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> dog barking speakers. Yeah, that's, yeah, or maybe the terminal take kindergarten class out more quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it is a field, so you know we can just make sure you know mm. cleaned up the geese, uh, you know, ahead of time, sort of thing. But um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. Yeah, I don't know. It's something. The plastic coyotes never worked. No, no. Twenty-four hours, forty-eight hours, they figure it out. They have plastic. We've had plastic oh, coyotes yeah. out there for years. Yeah. Move them around. Play some noise. How about the noise? If they would, oh, right. There's got to be a marketing thing. Someone's got to make one of those plastic coyotes that actually moves around when the noise. Put it on the what's it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Let it mow the lawn too. Yeah. It's out there, you know. It's some robotic coyote that yeah. barks at them. Something like try like it moves. So yappy dog. Yeah. That's um that's it for now. Um that's all I have to leave. Um, as you heard from the student reps, our summative assessment se season is uh coming to an end. Thankfully, students did a great job. Um, as Jeff said, I'll share some um, more formative assessment data, some of the smaller assessments that we use, the benchmark data. So um, just kind of overview of that, what that looks like, how we use that data, um, and look at some data patterns. So I'll be bringing that to you in June. Um, I just want to thank the building administrators with regards to the end of year events. Um, it's a really fun time of year to be out of um, the office behind the computer and sort of celebrating the year-long success, the hard work, the energy, the effort that um, students have put into whatever it might be, chorus, band, um, art, you know, so, and I know it's a, it's a lot of work for them too, and um, so just want to say thank you to them and also also the students who work so hard. So it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. I think la like last week it started to ramp up and um, you know, Jeff and I have been out and about and it's been, it's been really the highlight of my day. So, um, in terms of tech, I just want to give the board a heads up. We are, we are looking at replacing, um, student devices with Chromebooks instead of laptops moving forward. So, um, I did, uh, survey our curriculum fellows and our curriculum instructional leaders, um, to start, that's a group of 15 sort of curriculum leaders in the district to see, you know, what are their thoughts? Do they feel as though it would impact? And um, 13 out of the 15 said, yes, we can transition to a Chromebook, no problem. Um, most of what we do in district is web-based. Um, there's just a few circumstances. So the two that said no have specific programs they run on the laptops that they would need in the classrooms, which we could solve with just putting sets of, you know, laptops in the, in the classroom to help move that forward. The cost of a Chromebook is about half the price of a cost of a laptop. And when we think about going into a one-to-one -one replacement cycle with fidelity and longevity, you have to think about that in terms of a price point. Um, most of the districts across the state use Chromebooks. We are one of the very few that don't. So um, uh, I am going to put out a more comprehensive survey to now that I know that, you know, if, if all all 15 said, no, we can't do that, I probably would have, you know, 
not move forward, but I will put out a more comprehensive uh, survey to get a better sense of if everyone would be in support of that. Staff would remain um, with laptops. It would just be for student use. Um, so I just want to give the board a heads up. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, we haven't made a final decision yet, but it is in consideration. And that would be staggered, obviously, um, in over the coming years with the replacement site. Right. We wouldn't be able to do everybody yeah. at once. Yeah. But... yeah. So one thing I had heard about Chromebooks, I've never had one, so I don't know is that they were, I'll use the word, more fragile or they broke more often or anything like that? Is that, that's not an issue? Okay. No. Um, the it could have been, that could have been very dated information. Yeah. I mean, computers are fragile and, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter what kind of yeah. computer you put it in the hands of um, yeah. students, they're fragile and they do break. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, but our Microsoft license 365 would still be accessible to students. So they still would have access to Microsoft and, uh, and Google. Um, so they're not, they're not losing anything in the way of programming. Um, it's just, um, uh, and they look exactly the same. So, they look exactly the same. yeah. So, no, no grade level is going to be, you know, standing out as having a different color device or something like that. They all look the same. So, so it that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, just two things. So, our depths, our, our deficit is no longer a deficit. So, roughly um, after my projections last week, um, projecting about 80,000. Um, again, you know, that's all dependent on utilities coming from where I'm estimating, but I think we are in a good position to, um, sorry, was that 80,000 plus? To the good. To the good. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah but so we're not at a, in a deficit um, position anymore. So I think that's good. I mean, we only have a month and a half of school, so I don't anticipate that changing all that much. Um, so, um, and then we spoke with our custodian and secretary union. We're part going to bring it forward to FFO, but we're looking into a an early retirement um, incentive, um, probably not for July first, but giving them an option of September first or January first. Um, so, um, preparing that information now, and we'll review it with FFO. Has any question? Thank you. I, I have a quick question. Yeah. Does the resignation of the town finance director affect us in any way? Is that going to affect us going forward until something's replaced? I think it will, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. I guess my question was. Is that spillover account that we're working on going to catch that if there's anything there, or is that, that was, going to? That was my question. <laughs> was my, the non lapsing yeah. account, it, yeah. will we have it in place in time so that uh, these funds can be put? Uh, well, into it? so um, we wouldn't, uh, yes, I think we should because um, I'm estimating 80,000. So let's say we end the year on June 30th with, with 80,000. We still would have to wait for at least a minimum. I, I don't want to say the audit because it's far behind, but I have to file an EFS report. So I make sure okay. that I'm completely reconciled. Okay. So that's September 1st. Okay. So at the latest, uh, okay. so at the earliest, sure. we would not be able to make that determination until I file that report um, mm -hmm. with the state. Perfect. So I think we're in a very good position. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Um, then close administration reports. Moving on to committee reports. It'll be a triple A today. Um, Bill Reynolds. Yeah, I, it was a uh, charter meeting focused um, primarily on the social media um, campaign proposal. We just basically read through that and and uh, were in agreement that. Um, organizing our social media and um, and getting everything under uh, a common name um, so that people who are going I, to recap, I guess it was 80 or so um, different pieces of social media out there, some of which are not under our <laughs> umbrella <laughs> most. So, um, wow. so it's, it'd be nice to have parents and students know which um, 
social media is actual official stuff and and we've got a naming protocol in um put forth so blue check mark uh, uh, <laughs> so um i think that's i think that's a great way to go to get um get things organized there but it sounds like it's going to be a little bit of uh pd involved and additional um work for yeah. Yeah. So but needed. It's something yeah. we're really yeah, we're excited about it. Yeah. And it'll be good to learn what Kevin has learned at Killingly mm -hmm. and what they're doing. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I I am I think um we're going to be uh, uh the climate culture thing, I think we gotta pull him into our meeting right away because yeah. I think he's uh, going to be able to help us significantly with that. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on AAA? Policy. We didn't have one in, in between last meetings. Okay. We did have, I guess, the, the non-affiliated. Non yeah. The, it's my player. I say it again. Yeah. It's my favorite meeting. It's once a year. It's less than 10 minutes. Um, we already talked about everything that was on there yeah. earlier in the evening, so okay. but it Excellent. is my favorite 10 minute meeting once it, a year. <laughs> and then, Jamie, you want to give an update on Cave? Uh, Cave. Cave is currently looking for resolutions. Um, I don't have the deadline date off the top of my head, but so the resolutions are things that go to delegate assembly for um, the delegates to vote on whether or not you'd like Cave to pursue it with the legislature in the legislative session. That deadline is soon. I just don't know it off the top of my head. Um, and I'll have a state relations committee meeting June 20th, where we talk about the things that are currently being passed or not passed um, in the legislative session. So. You've got any poll too. The middle school um, is yeah, submitting, you no, know, they're submitting um, the music department for seeing if we could maybe have our students present at the oh, Cave Gaps convention. Yeah, they're, they're going to be putting together a video presentation for see what kind of poll I got. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's due by June 6th, I think, or it June. Is. Yeah, so. I know the president. Yeah, Let's see if I so. Can do it. <laughs> we'll plug there. Yes. You know, I, 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 yeah, I don't know if Eastland has ever had student I groups, think but I, I, we've tried in the past and we haven't been successful, so. Well, I'll see. Yeah. I'll see if I can. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little plug. All right. I'll see what I can do. I'm not making any promises. Uh, thanks, Jamie. Yep. And Kate, anything from Larry? So, Jill's been going in my absence. Oh my gosh. Yes. I know that Kate went to um, China. Was it China or Japan? Yes, yeah. Uh huh. And uh, came back and had an amazing trip and experience over there. But... Kate Erickson, the director. No, I, I know who it is. It's just, it was. Oh, we didn't. I, I don't know that. I, I yeah, Kate, Kate Erickson's the director of Learn. That's who you're referencing. Right, right, right. right. I, I uh, assumed him. I didn't know if you were talking in here by yourself in the third person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, they're just they're a dynamic group. I'll be honest with you, it was all over my head and hard to keep up with because I didn't have an historical perspective. But what's amazing is uh, just the things they're doing in the area and the students that they're serving. So I don't really have anything profound to say. As I said, it, it, I was in over my head, but I was there. Well, the collegiality, I think, is remarkable. Oh, no matter what, what town you're from, but people come to the table working focused on solving the problem regardless of who you are where you're from but taking everybody's input and using it judiciously and kindly and wisely so it's a great group to see. I wish more town people more people not all the towns always show up at the same no. time which is really too really too bad but it's an amazing group. Okay so I close our committee reports uh any board comment future agenda items. I did hear from one student that Wrote and he was indicating that he wished that there were more classes. So, and I know it's tough budgetary times and we have our restrictions, but that was a voice that came to me that we need to always think if we're cutting how we can 
I can add some help. Any other thoughts? Okay, we do have uh, an executive session item um, to discuss uh, the proposed performance evaluation for ELPS superintendent for the 22-23 school year. Do I hear a I would, motion? I would like to make a motion yeah. to enter executive session to include Superintendent Newton for the purpose of discussing his proposed performance evaluation for 2023 school year. Seconded by Katie. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstained. Candace, I'll call you again. We're going to stay here. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good night, everyone. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you.